Hey guys, it's Ginger from TravelersMindset.us and today on the interview series we have a wonderful, lovely woman named Amy Segretti and I'm going to actually make an exception and read her intro this time because there's a lot of awesome stuff and I want to make sure you know it all. So Amy is the founder of Live All of You. She's a recovering editor-in-chief turned writer. She's an awesome writer. She's fluent in Spanish, wine, and AP style. And she's written and edited for the Huffington Post, Thought Catalog, New Worker Magazine, Elephant Journal, The Baltimore Sun, The Globe, list goes on and on and on. It's awesome. Um, and basically, Amy helps people honor their inner compass, craft their day from the inside out, connect with fellow world loopers like you and me, and weave their unique selves into their daily rhythm. She actually hasn't had a 9-to-5 since 2007, and she lives a completely location-independent life as an entrepreneur. So welcome, Amy. That was an awesome intro. <laughs> Thanks, Ginger. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I mean, there's just there's a lot of you, and I think that's what you really bring to the table with live all of you because there's there's so many facets and I mean we can start talking about how that relates to the world and world travel but first um what's your what's your number one tip for a new traveler looking to go international Ooh, going right into it okay so my number one tip is to well, so this kind of feeds into your own ethos, but is to travel where you are, like you say. Um, I call it kind of putting on my wonder brain. So to, for example, like take a day where you leave your phone at home, leave your computer at home, iPad at home, and wander around and go to places that you never, ever go to in your city. Um, I did this once in Boulder, where we both are based, um, and wound up at the at in the mountains in an auditorium listening to a concert like that I never would have found otherwise. Um, and it really just opens your mind to the way that you can travel anywhere in the world, really. And like practicing doing that where you live is always really important. So, yeah, awesome. I know that speaks easier to you. <laughs> and cost effective as well, I'm sure. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. So then give us a little bit of background. Where are you from and, and what are you really like into in terms of your style of travel? Mm. I'm, well, I'm originally from New Jersey um, and I went to college in Maryland and then I moved to North Carolina where I was the editor-in-chief, as you mentioned, the recovering one um, <laughs> for the Globe newspaper. And uh, I wound up in Colorado through a car accident actually in 2007. Um, I was driving with my boyfriend at the time out to San Francisco. We were leaving North Carolina, and he um, he looked at a map. I don't know why we were still using maps, uh, <laughs> no phone. <laughs> and he was looking at it around midnight, going about 90 miles an hour uh, mm -hmm. on I-70, and he hit a little reflector pole, which normally we would have just barreled over, but because we were going so fast and the car was so heavy with all of our stuff, we flipped over three times and landed on the right side of the road. Um, we were both like relatively fine. I was flown in a helicopter to a hospital in Aurora. Wow, um, oh, there's Colorado, okay, got it. Yeah, so it was in Colorado, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was in Lyman, Colorado. Yeah, um, yeah, and I had never been to Colorado, had no plans to really go to Colorado, <laughs> um, <laughs> and he was fine. So um, we spent some time recovering here. Uh, and we picked up all our stuff off the highway, uh, from the highway patrol's uh, office where they keep all of your stuff and charge you $50 a day for it. If you're ever wondering what happens if all of your stuff ends oh. up in the middle of the highway, that's what happens. Wow. <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> and so we, we sort of crash landed here and, um, absolutely fell in love with Boulder and, um, decided to make it our home base. Um, we broke up in 2008 and we're um, still really good friends, but, so since I found my home, um, my soul home, as it were, I basically use it as a jumping off point for me to travel to other places. So um, I've since lived in Spain and traveled to Nicaragua and India and France and Mexico. And um, I always get to come back here, which makes me feel really good. And I'm, you know, 31, you know, getting up there. <laughs> and it, it feels really good to have a home base. So my style of travel is um, I don't go for like, a weekend. I feel like traveling for a weekend is silly um, <laughs> for me anyway, because I don't get to immerse myself in the culture. So I want to go somewhere for like at least like at minimum like a week, mm -hmm. um, usually like two weeks or three weeks before I start missing Boulder. Um, but I find that balance is really good for me now. Um, I used to be able to just travel around with my suitcase and bounce around, but I'm really needing a sense of home. So mm -hmm. I try and find that where I go as well too and immerse myself in the culture. Totally. 
So that's yeah. awesome that you, you kind of take it a little bit slower now. And I'm curious, like, what are the advantages of doing that? Because I have my own ideas, but I'm curious mm-hmm. about yours. Um, you know, I, I really, well, so this doesn't happen all the time, but I really like to stay in, um, one place, like by one place, I mean like one Airbnb or one, um, not usually a hotel, but maybe like a friend's house or, um, a couch surfing experience and really like get to know that neighborhood even of whatever the city is. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if I would say like pretend to live there, but (laughs) I pretty much like live there. Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel, um, I have this, uh, for better or for worse, I have a certain level of adaptability where I will like think that I live somewhere if I've been there for two weeks like I'll be like I'll have my coffee shop I'll have like my you know my bookstore I'll have maybe a friend or two or acquaintance and um know where I want to go explore in nature if it's by nature or might be by the beach like I'll have like my like I'll set up Amy's like life (laughs) in this place and um awesome yeah yeah, so that's another way that I travel. That's super <laughs> tricky, and I really like that because I think what what holds a lot of people back sometimes is that they're afraid that they won't have any sort of routine if they, like, hit the road for a while, right, um, even just two weeks or three weeks. And it sounds like you've found a really nice way of – combining that adventurous and exploration with like having a couple stable places where you do frequent that, you know, cafe and maybe even, I don't know, make friends with the barista and actually practice some language that you might not otherwise. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like finding a sense of community, even when you travel, I think is really important. It's awesome. So then how do you meet new people in the places that you travel to? Mm, you know, usually I meet them um, when I'm wandering around and when I'm, well, when I'm at restaurants or I'm at bars or if I'm at coffee shops, I'll usually strike up a conversation um, easier than I perhaps would in my in my home, even though I try and change that as much as I can. But um, And then I usually, like, I'll have a book or um, we'll talk about something to do with food because I'm really into food and wine, as you know, um, and we'll connect over something and then, um, we'll find another interest and then we'll be like, okay, well let's work tomorrow or let's, you know, cause I'm location independent. So like you, I'll work wherever I travel. So, um, or let's, you know, go on a hike or something. So usually just through like serendipity, I meet people. I don't tend to go like on meetup.com or, or anything when I'm traveling. I don't really, um, like set that up so much because, um, I like to just like meet people on the fly and see who I like vibe with and <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, so I, I have to actually share a little bit of a story for anyone listening or watching because it's about how we met, which Ooh. was very, uh, let's say non-traditional. Um, <laughs> so basically Yay. it kind of goes into this, like just meeting people that have common interests and then diving into that. So basically, um, I had read an article of, of Amy's, of yours, and I found it really awesome. And I was like, well, who is this author? So I like looked you up and I found your <laughs> website and was thinking, okay, this girl is awesome. Like, where is she in the world? Because it said you were traveling a lot. And I'm like, oh, wow, she's in Boulder. Wait a minute. I live in Boulder. We should definitely meet. And so one thing that like I found was I was a little nervous to reach out to you because I, I thought you were this like not that you're not, but I thought you were this, like, hot shot that just wouldn't, you know, you know, talk to, like, this young woman like me, and um, when I sent the message, I mean, just saying, like, hey, like, I read your article, I think you're awesome, um, I live in Boulder, too, like, would you be open to meeting up with me, and you responded immediately, so open, open-hearted, awesome, enthusiastic, like, yes, totally, come over to my place, we'll share some wine together, and I was like, <laughs> what? It was actually the first time that that particular outcome had happened. Normally people would suggest like, oh, let's meet at a coffee shop or something. And and you were just so welcoming. And I mean, I, I think if someone is out there who you really want to connect with, it's especially like nowadays, it's way more common than we might think to just make that outreach and see what what could come out of it. So I wanted to thank you uh, publicly for being so open. It's been really, really lovely meeting you and knowing you that way. So, yeah. Mm, Thank you, Ginger. I love you. (laughs) (laughs) I love you too. (laughs) But But yeah, that's that's a really good point too. I mean, um, and I do do this sometimes. Like I will be on Facebook and, you know, just – all the time and (laughs) I'll notice someone that's maybe your friend or another friend of my friends that has a similar like outlook on life or like-minded person and sometimes I'll just friend them and you know often we already have like 20 friends in common it's just like a quick 
thing and pretty much everyone does that now because we all have our privacy settings and and so then when I go to a place um I'll just search like my friends in San Francisco or wherever and I'll see like oh there's this like awesome girl that I know through Ginger or there's a girl in New York like that that I'm still trying to meet up with um and I'll you know be like oh I know Ginger we're you know interested in this and then that'll be a really great way to connect so And one thing, do you do that internationally as well? Like how, if you, for instance, are in Boulder and you know that you're going to go to somewhere in South America that you haven't been before, like what will you do? What are those first steps that you'll take to kind of orient yourself to like get in the loop with the community there? Or do you do that at all? Like I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Um, So I actually, not to like pimp my own stuff, but (laughs) in my like holistic day design packet, I actually made um, a sheet specifically for this where I wrote down, I wish I had it around, but I write down, um, you know, where, where should I eat? Where should I stay? Who should I connect with? And who can be my, like, who can be my tribe there? Like if I know people, obviously, you know, through someone else or who can be, um, like someone that could be even like a mentor type figure that might be there. Um, And I'll like write down all these things. And sometimes I'll use that to like vet destinations. Like if I'm thinking about going to, you know, Chile or Buenos Aires, I've never been to either of those, but, (laughs) um, you know, if in one place I find that there's a stronger community or more people I can learn from or, um, you know, something more than just like the weather's nice, which is always a great reason too, but, you know, um, I like to do that kind of thing. Sounds a little bit more strategic. I like it. It's awesome. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. So then what about like the, the dark side of travel? Like people always have these fears that things will go wrong. And I know from one of our past conversations that you had one of those fears come true, but, um, I think it's actually a really great story and I'd love for you to share it with us because I think people would get a lot of value out of seeing how, you know, even a bad experience can really turn into something really, really awesome. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I'd love to. Um, actually, this is the first time I'd be sharing this ever at all because I was super silent about it on, you know, social media or anything yeah. when it actually happened. So, um, so I was in uh, Mexico in Sayulita in March of 2010 um, with my boyfriend at the time, and we were going to have a romantic day, and we were just going to um, walk around town, and then we found this beautiful path through a jungle, and we hiked and hiked up, up, and then we hiked down, and we found this awesome beach um, that was pretty secluded, although there were, like, seven other people on the beach, like, just spread around, like, like so there were some people in tents, and some people um, just hanging out, and um, someone starting a fire, because it was around sunset, although the sun was still up, and so we were like, this is safe and fine, and um, so we were just sitting on the beach and talking and then we were both facing the ocean obviously as one does when sitting at the beach watching the sunset and um (laughs) we both like felt this like shift like there was something like coming or someone coming out of the jungle because the behind us was just the jungle because we'd hiked up through the jungle to get there and a man came running out of the jungle um came directly to us and approached us with a gun and it was all in spanish (laughs) and it was just a little like traumatic so I don't really remember too much of what he said but basically obviously he wanted all of our stuff um we gave him wallets purses everything we had and you know you think you wonder like what you'd do in that situation like sometimes I think I'd be like karate kid and just like kick the gun out of his hand (laughs) but that like doesn't happen like you're like you're like terrified you know um you don't know if it's loaded or not and so then I like took my phone out of my purse like thinking I was slick like because I was like oh communication like with the outside world like help and then if he of course saw it and then like cocked the gun and pointed it directly like at my head and so obviously I gave him the phone um so and then he ran away and we were just like trembling and in shock and there was this point that I realized which I told you um I had my passport in the purse too because um not because I was being like silly or ignorant I I lived in Spain like a few years before and I was told constantly by people that I had to have my passport on me if I wanted to buy something with a credit card and so I just assumed like I'd have to do that in Mexico even though I don't think you do so yeah Mm-hmm. Um, my passport was in there and we walked back through the jungle and we were just, I was just like in total shock. Um, but then we, we ran into this couple, um, as we were walking back to Sayulita with, with nothing really. Um, and they were from Canada and we told them our story and they were just like, you know what, here's $80. Just, you know what, just like send it back to us whenever you can. Like we trust you. Like you seem like you need that. You're not, this isn't like a story you're making up, you know? Um, and so so that happened and we were like, wow, this is awesome. Like we saw like this beautiful, these beautiful humans just like 
you know, giving like not even knowing who we are. We could have been you know, lying or something. And so we had that to go on. And then we walked back to the hotel and we were like, okay, we only have $80. And, but then the, ho- the, ho- the hostel actually, the hostel was like, you know, you can stay here for, you know, however long you need to like go get your passport, come back, you know, get settled. You can like pay up later, you know? Wow. And that was another like, wow, super like me. Yeah. Like, I mean, we had, we were talking on the way back and we were like, this is going to be super hard, like to transfer money here or get, you know, mm-hmm. right. We don't have our card numbers stored anywhere. Um, and then we, like, immediately were here with these two, like, really beautiful, like, things, um, events that happened. So um, through that money and through um, staying at the hostel, like, we were able to rent, like, this super cheap car <laughs> and drive out to Guadalajara to get a passport for me um, and then drive all the way back. And then during that time, like, the third really magical kind of thing that happened was we um, we were there on a, ho- a holiday. I'm not sure which holiday it was, but... Um, nothing very popular that we would know in the U.S., but all the little villages that we drove through were celebrating, um, and so they had all these little parties and, like, tequila and, you know, dancing and festivals, so, um, and then we saw um, this one woman, uh, we got close to her, and she was an older woman, and we told her our story, and she was like, I'm really sorry that happened to you, because now, you know, you probably have a bad opinion of of Mexicans, and we hope that you come back and see, like, that we're not all, like, like that, or maybe he wasn't, or whatever, you know, race sure. aside, like, so, um, yeah, so it, I mean, I don't think I'd call it, like, a super you know, the best experience I could have had, but like, it was like knowing that something like bad can happen to you that we would all regard as like something we wouldn't want happening. And then seeing, seeing like the magic that can still happen after that, you know? So kind of like the beauty of humanity thing. So yeah. Awesome. That's like such a wonderful end to like kind of a terrible thing really. Um, and thank goodness that you're, you know, obviously safe and you were you were safe, even though the things weren't safe. Uh, I think there's a big distinction there. And yeah, so thank you for sharing that. It really gives a lot of perspective. Um, I personally have never had something like that happen. I've been scammed or, you know, like been Mm -hmm. followed in dark streets and whatever. But I think like having a gun pointed at your face, you know, that's like, that's that's another level. So thank you for sharing that perspective. Um, Yeah. um... Yeah. So then to, to, move out of the darkness and into the light. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what what are the, some things that you found that like travel has really contributed to your life? And um, by that, I also mean, you know, like in your everyday surroundings, like how, how do you stay adventurous, um, even if you're not traveling internationally, like just in the States? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, as you know, I have a long distance boyfriend um, and he lives in New York and we're very lucky enough to go back and forth um, to see each other. And so that, and he lives um, in Brooklyn, but it's obviously a very different place than Boulder. And so that ends up being really stimulating to me because it's so different. And because the, um, I describe Brooklyn like this endearingly. I say that it's, it's like Boulder, except instead of nature, there's more people. Um, <laughs> so it's got like the same kind of like hipstery, like entrepreneurial vibe, but there's just way more people and not as much nature, <laughs> not as much mountains anyway. Um, and so to go back and forth between there always kind of keeps me on my game uh, in terms of the showing up in the world the way I want to show up in either place. Um, I think that that's something that I always try and do and is a core belief of mine that, um, no matter where I travel that I'm always like presenting myself authentically. So, um, I love to do that. I love that you just said that because it's, (laughs) it's, it's something that, um, was very present for me when I was in living in Germany versus when I was living in Thailand that I was literally like acting like a different person. And I, I actually got kind of exhausted by that. Um, and so that when I made the decision to move to Boulder, it's so, it's great that you're saying this because it's like, Oh wow. You know, you can actually choose to be the same person no matter what social circle you're moving in, no matter what location you're living in. Um, and yeah, sure, you might have to tweak a couple of things in terms of interpersonal relations, like how am I actually yeah. speaking to people around me, but um, mm-hmm. as far as being authentic, then that can be really very consistent and very energizing as well, so awesome. Mm-hmm. 
Mr. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> um, now, can I ask a question? What is that thing in the background there? <laughs> ah, yes. This is another way I stay adventurous. Um, <laughs> do tell. Do tell. <laughs> it is my pole. It is not a stripper pole. It is a goddess pole. <laughs> What's um, the difference? Like, please enlighten <laughs> us. We probably, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind calling it either, but I noticed that when I say, or when someone says, like, stripper pole, there's, like, the connotation of, mm. of something else, uh, sure. even though you know really it's just <laughs> it's all dance and wonderment but um yeah definitely use it for fitness I know you came over here and you were here for a little while and we yeah. were having wine and you didn't notice it was there I totally so I, did I not notice it was there I sort of like energetically cloak it <laughs> which is the hippiest thing I will say today um yes, yes. <laughs> We're, we're venturing into woo-woo territory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, but that's like, that's so cool to me that you do that because it's like this one thing that's really playful. It's like great for you. It's it's something that's a little bit out of the norm. Like people probably kind of have like thoughts about it. Like, hmm, like why is she doing that or, or whatever. But for you, it's it's fun and it's self-expression and you know, like that's all, all of those things like make up the traveler's mindset. Like you're, you're curious about like, what could you do next? Right. It's like acrobatics. You're like yeah. playing <laughs> with your space. And mm -hmm. we, very often when we're on the road, we play with our space, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And you have to be both strong and graceful on it. I mean, you can, if you've ever seen a guy try and, and pole dance when he hasn't before, like he just like, he's like, yeah, I can do this. And he'll just like jump on it and it'll be like, rawr. And you're like, but that's not like the dance. Like the dance mm -hmm. is different. You know, you need to have like, yeah, Both Grace as well. So <laughs> awesome, awesome. So I'm curious now. Um, do you do this sort of like do you, goddess dance, pole dancing, whatever you want to call it? Do you do that around the world? Like, can you find that in other places? Mm, you can. Yes. Um, yeah. There's there's so many. It's really nice actually. There's so many um, new like gyms and fitness studios that are that are doing that kind of thing, doing more like embodied expression type stuff. Mm, cool. Um, yeah, which is always a fun adventure to go and look for that. So, <laughs> oh, and I know that you salsa dance. I'm actually um, something that I like to do is is take my hobbies with me on the road. So, like that's another form of consistency. Have you ever tried that as well? Like going other places and yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's awesome. Um, and I think you probably know this, like in Los Angeles, they do, or Los Angeles in the West, they dance on one. Um, totally. And then on, in New York, they dance on two. Um, I know how to do both, but on two is like not as great at all because my muscle memory is for on one. So I will just, if I forget that I'm supposed to be dancing on the second beat, then I will just switch. So it's yeah. fun to like try the same dance in a different way in different places. And then in Miami also, they do... Um, uh, Cuban oh, style Rueda, Rueda yeah. as well. Rueda in the circle, which they have calls, so and then you like flip. Yeah, and sometimes I don't remember what the calls are, but it's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's it's always there are always ways to mix it up and like take your hobbies with you on the road. I think. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Definitely. So then, one question for you to sort of wrap things up a little bit: If you were a new traveler and you were thinking about taking your first international trip what would be your number one tip for someone venturing outside of these borders for the very first time? Okay, so my tip would be um, to plan in space um, in your trip because I, I find that when, um, when I first started traveling, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to this new country. I want to do everything. I want to plan like this museum or this, you know, cafe or this historic place. And then, and then I want to go to this party. And so I would like plan every minute. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wouldn't leave time for the relationship between myself and the city to develop organically. So, um, even if I'm staying somewhere with where friends are, right. Like, so I'm staying with some friends and it's like, oh, it's, you know, have dinner with them every night. And so like, planning time in to actually think of building a relationship with that city or that village or wherever it is um, with just you, like you and that place. Like think of that as a relationship to nurture. That's something that I... <laughs> I like that a lot, actually. Nice. So, I, for I forget it often, so I'm always reminding myself as well. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Like thank you for that. What would you say you have like the strongest relationship with then, like as a place? Oh, which place? Which place, yeah. Oh gosh, um, Asturias in Spain, um, in northern Spain. Uh, it's a beautiful region that um, a lot, not a lot of, I don't see a lot of travel articles about it, and there's not a lot of Americans there, which I love. But. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can like cut that out, actually. <laughs> Keep it under the radar so only the cool people listening to this will go. 
Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Which is basically everyone listening to this. <laughs> Sweet. So then if people have other questions or if they want to find you and have a glass of wine on your porch, just like I did, um, <laughs> where can they find you and what you do in the world? Um, on either Facebook or Twitter or Instagram uh, as Amy Segretti, which is A-M-Y-S-E-G-R-E-T-I, or at my website, Live All of You as well. Awesome. So liveallofyou.com, right? Yes, dot com. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for bringing the good vibes and for giving travel tips and, and also, honestly, for sharing, like, the little bit of a darker side that, you know, can happen. And I think it's really awesome that you were able to find a way out of that and, like, make it into a good experience, too. So, Awesome. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Thank you, Ginger. I love you. You too. Bye.